Hey guys, welcome to Guitar Nutrition. Today, we're talking about a bizarre concept of playing with only one finger. My friend challenged me to a one finger guitar solo challenge on TikTok. Guitar solo, one finger. So I had to do it, but it got me thinking, is there any legitimate reason why we might want to practice doing things with one finger on the guitar other than TikTok challenges? <laughs> there are a couple of reasons and today we're going to go over those. The first thing that came to mind is something I've been getting my students to do recently when they are learning just a C major scale. When we play a C major scale, we want to also know what notes we're playing. But what happens if you simply rely on the shape of the scale as you learn it and think C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you end up using the fingers as cues for what notes you're playing. You rely too much on that shape. So in that situation, simply just using one finger, using your index finger, and trying to play the notes, calling them out and playing them, C, E, G, B, that kind of thing, can be really helpful because it forces you to visualize the pattern rather than relying on the memory of our fingers for the notes that we're playing. Similar thing can be done with uh, a shape like this. We're, we are dealing with third shapes. If we want to know what notes we're playing, A and C, G and B, F and A, C and E, if we want to know what notes we're playing, we don't want to be relying on this third shape in order for us to know that. So using the first finger really helps us visualize where these notes are. There are a couple of other ways we can actually use it in terms of practical applications. One thing we can do on the guitar is roll our fingers. To get to the next string. We never want to be swapping swapping strings in the same fret with the same finger. It's basically impossible to do that cleanly. That's where rolling your fingers comes in. It's a technique that allows us to transition between strings within one fret really, really easily. And so that's something that's worth practicing with one finger. Another thing that I use sometimes, and this is a good way to get yourself out of a tricky situation if you've messed up your fingering. Let's say you've got your first finger playing this note with the tip of your finger, and you know you need to slide down to that note and then play this note. We don't want to be jumping strings as we mentioned, so one thing that I do is slide down, and as I'm sliding, I kind of angle my finger sideways so I can kind of flatten it like that and rotate. So I end up playing that note there on the string with the flat part of my finger and then I can roll my finger back up to the next one. <laughs> that can be a great way to get yourself out of a tricky situation if you've gone messed up some fingering and still want to keep playing smoothly. Or it's just a legitimate way of getting around the fretboard. And you can do it with all fingers. It can also be something that you need to do if you've realized you need to go to the next string and haven't quite positioned your finger effectively. Say we're on this note here, and we need to go and play that next note. What we can do is kind of bring our finger sideways, flatten it, rotate it while it's flat, and then we're ready to roll up to the next one. You gotta work a little bit so you don't 
bend the note while you're doing this technique. But it's a pretty interesting idea. It's something I've never really thought of that intentionally, but it's something I've noticed myself doing in situations where I have gone and messed up my fingering and had to continue playing a lick or something without trying to make a mess of it. One other bizarre situation I've seen that <laughs> requires you to play multiple strings or frets or whatever with the same finger. I used this in that little in that little riff I was playing. I, I went, it's pretty hard to do it here. So I played that note, then that note, then I slid down, played that, that note there. Third fret with my first finger. And then I also hit the second fret with the side of my first finger. That's a technique that I learned looking in a chord book once when I saw this chord. I don't even know if it was this chord, but it was a similar chord to this. Which sounds super pretty. But what you're actually doing in this chord is playing, you know, one note here on the eighth fret, these two fingers each in the seventh fret, and your first finger is playing the sixth fret and also the fifth fret. You're using the tip of your finger to play the sixth fret and the side of this knuckle here to play the fifth fret. <laughs> Bizarre. I've never come across a situation where I needed to use that chord in real life, but it's there. <laughs> so yeah, you can also use one finger to play melodically up and down one string. Each string obviously has a different tone. So if you're going for the tone of the individual string, but you want the melody on that specific string, one finger lines can be really cool. So yeah, I, I don't know if there's any practical reason why one should go about playing a solo with only one finger, but you can. And it brings to mind a lot of different uses for weird positionings of the first finger or any finger that actually do play a purpose in helping you get around the fretboard and you can practice them if you want they're good things to just kind of know and to have in the back of your mind if you ever need them or get yourself stuck in a fingering situation they can help you get out of that uh but yeah hope you've learned something <laughs> with a slightly slightly unusual technical lesson make sure you subscribe to the channel let me know if you have any questions don't forget to like the video and we'll catch you guys next time <laughs>